ever wanted to start simulating something but didn't quite know what? Or you just wanted to play around with the simulator but don't really bother to make a simulation? Well, there are answers to your prayers. As always, the first thing we need to do is create a new simulation. Now there are two things we can do if we just want to play around this simulation. We can look in the components menu in the various categories that are already built in. For example, we have op amps and here we have a wide selection of uh, operation amplifiers created by both linear technology or analog devices. If we click on one of these components, we can simply open the test fixture. Here we have test circuit ready made with the amplifier that we selected. And if we simply click run, we can see how this circuit works. So this is basically an amplifier that amplifies the input signal by two. Of course, we can do something more complicated. For example, apart from simple op amps, we have power products. Now these are power supplies. And again, we select random one, let's say this one. No, this is too simple. There we go, something with switches in it. Again, we open the macro model text fixture and we have a ready-made boost circuit in this case. We can simply run it and we will see that the power supply, well, it takes a bit of time for it to start working, but we can analyze the switch node, current through it and so on. So all these examples are quite useful if you want to analyze certain circuits or just types of circuits in general. Now what I wanted to show you is not necessarily these ready-made components, but something else. So under LT Spice 17, we have the examples, we have the jigs. These are the simulations I already showed you about. These are the macro model fixtures for the various components. And then we have this educational folder. In here we have a ton of circuits. So let's have a look at a few of these. Let's start with the classic NE555. Now, in this case, we don't have a model of the component, but we have the component itself, the 555IC, discreetly modeled. So we have all the components, transistors, the resistors that make up this IC. And we can start to play along with the circuit. In this case, they made a PVM generator that generates in steps. But of course you can play around with the parameters of the circuit or with the external components. For example, if I change, I don't know, this capacitor, the frequency should be completely different. As you can see, the response changed. So with all of these simulations, you can play around with any of the parameters, modify any of the components in the circuit, nothing is fixed. Okay, let's see what else we got around here. No, I do not want to save it. 100 watt. Now, what could this be? Well, of course, it's a power amplifier. In this case, they are driving an 8 ohm load with various types of signals. So this is a circuit in which they step the input voltage in a number of steps, in two octaves, I think, and then you get the output response. Of course, you can look at the output power, not just the voltage, and we can see, we cannot integrate it, of course, since it's stepped, but we get peaks of up to 200 watts using this circuit. Again, we have a short description, we have some models for the components. These are non-standard components, so you will not find these in LD Spice, but you can import the models as I showed you in some previous videos. Okay. Let's see if we can find something else that's interesting. Band gap. This is a voltage reference band gap type circuit, which should give us quite stable voltages over a large temperature range. So we will see that it's only one or two percent, depending on the type of circuit we use. So we have A, B, C, D, and it's stable over the entire temperature range. Now, of course, if we play around with the input voltage, like it's six, we should get almost exactly the same values. So this circuit is stable not just in temperature, but also with input voltage. Next, let's look at an oscillator. We got a cold pits type oscillator based around the JFET. And of course, after a short startup, 
we can see the output being sine wave. Well, not quite the output, it's the current going through the inductor. The output should be collected from the drain of the transistor, so we see nice sine wave, not a very big amplitude, but this can be amplified further with a, another amplifier circuit or something. Okay, what other circuits do we have around here? The LM741, classic amplifier, again modeled with discrete components, and we see that it's used to amplify a signal coming in in the non-inverting input, and we see that the gain is set with these resistors, so R12 and R11, this is giving us a factor 11 amplification. Another thing you can try, which there are quite a lot of throughout these examples, are filters. And we have all sorts of signal filters, for example, the butter filter, or better known as the Butterworth filter. Now if we run this simulation, we'll see that we have four filters here, obviously. These are quite high order filters, so we see that in a single decade, you got about 120, 130 decibels. So this is a sixth or seventh order filter, quite a high order filter. And we can play with the components to change the filter characteristics. Other things we can play around with include quite a simple curve tracer. This is a circuit that you can use to trace the various curves of the transistor. In this case we see the collector current relative to the collector emitter voltage at the various base currents. Again, we can change the transistor, see the same behavior at a different transistor, and re-simulate and see exactly what happens. What else do we find around here? Let's say we want something a bit more complicated, a bit more challenging, so not simple op-amp or whatever. Hmm, P2, now what could this be? What the? Philbrook researches solid state op amp? You mean to tell me this thing is an op amp? Oh, we gotta see this thing in action. Well, it doesn't react really fast. But what is it? Let's see, what's the input signal? Well, we got a ramp signal and we got an output. The output is factor 10 of the input, inverted of course, and well, it's an amplifier. Works like it. But what makes it so special, I wonder? I, I could look this thing up. What is this P2 Philbrick? Philbrook amplifier. Philbrick, this this sounds familiar. Oh well it, this this isn't new. They all new solid state. Let's look a bit closer here. No tubes, no choppers, nothing but for of course. Greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Full differential input, yeah it should be truly floating. What do you mean it's truly floating? Well, this is the negative input, the positive input, some components and... Oh! It is truly floating, it's not connected to anything else. So the two inputs are floating. Well, if you want a challenge and don't know what to spend your time with, you can stay and analyze the circuit. It's quite complicated, as everything starting from oscillators to tuned LC circuits, transformers, varicap diodes, the lot. So all in all, if you want a circuit to play with and you don't want to be bothered with actually creating it, you have a lot of these already built into the simulator. Hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. If you want to stay updated with all my latest videos, please subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Bye bye.